Well, good morning, Chapel Hill. It's time again for our uh, devotion for the day. Uh, this is uh, Holy Week, and this, this week I wanted to do several uh, devotions on the path that Jesus took to the cross. And so for our daily devotions this week, we're going to be talking about the events of, of Holy Week. I wanted to talk a little bit about um, the uh, li Easter lilies. We mentioned a couple of Sundays ago that in lieu of uh, uh, buying uh, Easter lilies for uh, Easter morning's service, um, we are going to use the, the donations that come in uh, for honoring uh, and, and for, for, for in memories of and honor of uh, people. Uh, these uh, donations will go uh, to tornado victims. Um, and uh, we talked about that the first Sunday. And I think we'll, we're going to post something on the website, maybe Facebook too, um, about uh, what these these givings will, will go to, these donations will go to. And so if you want to give to that, um, you can send your, your check uh, to the church and just kind of earmark it, tornado, tornado victims or, or Easter lilies, something, something to that effect. But there'll be instructions, I'm sure, on, uh, on Facebook and the website for you for that. And so that's, uh, that's another way that we can share uh, with our neighbors who are suffering. And uh, we want to we do all we can in, in this time, especially in these times. So let's, let's pray um, as we talk about um, the opening of, of Holy Week. Let's bow our heads together. Father, we just thank you for your love for us, and we thank you as we look back to the day that Jesus came and gave himself for us and loved us enough to take our burdens upon himself. I pray that everyone who is watching this uh, as we pray together will get a sense, a true sense of what happened during this week, of how much Jesus loves us, loved us and loves us now still. I pray that you'd bless us with these awarenesses in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, this morning I wanted to go to the book of John, if you've got your Bibles with you. Um, I wanted to give you a little context um, to Palm Sunday. We had a wonderful Palm Sunday worship service. I loved what uh, Keith and, and uh, Rob and Nikki and uh, um, Krista did with the music. I loved the fact that there was pictures of kids with um, palm branches, just wonderful, um, wonderful setup, and I just en enjoyed that uh, very, very much. Um, but uh, for this first uh, devotional for me and during Holy Week, I wanted to go back to Palm Sunday and revisit that and give you a little context. Obviously, Palm Sunday is, a, is, is a, uh, centered around Christ, uh, Christ's triumphal entry what the, what the Bible or the, or the church has come to call Christ's triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And um, it's a reference to the day that Jesus got on a donkey and rode into Jerusalem, met by crowds shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna. And um, it was a wonderful celebration, probably one of the greatest celebrations um, in the New Testament. And um, I kind of wanted to unpackage that for you as far in terms of context, because um, we can read through Mark, Matthew, Mark, and Luke and not get this specific context that, uh, that John gives us because there's, there's a prelude to this worship service that um, kind of shocks us, uh, makes us aware of what really is, is going on. And so I want to just kind of give you this, this background. This, and, and you'll be wanting, to, as you just kind of maybe read John chapter, the Gospel of John chapter 11 and 12, it gives you this context. It falls on the heels of uh, Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. It, uh, it was one of the pinnacle moments of Christ's ministry when he stands at the tomb and he says, Lazarus, come forth. And just really a highlight of, of his ministry. It's really, um, you know, one of the profound miracles, obviously, of him raising, raising the dead. He raised other uh, people from the dead in the Gospels, but none so dramatic uh, none of them take such a center stage as this raising of Lazarus from the, from the dead. And so the Pharisees, in chapter 11, uh, he's just raised uh, Lazarus from, from the dead, and the Pharisees are aggravated. Um, 11, chapter 11, verse uh, 47, it's halfway through the verse, they say this, they say, the, Pharisees, or the Pharisees and, the, and the, uh, the chief priests, they say, what are we accomplishing? They asked, here is this man performing many miraculous signs. If we let him go on like this, 
Everyone will believe in him, and then the Romans will come and take away both our place and our nation. And so you get a sense of the, of the frustrations that the, the chief priests and the Pharisees have. And then dropping down to verse 57, um, we're, well, actually, let's go back up to uh, uh, 53. In verse 53, it said, John tells us, from that day on, uh, they plotted to take his life. So that was the time, uh, this, this response of the crowd loving Jesus and believing in Jesus, this was the thing that triggered uh, in the uh, and, the, and the priests, chief priests and the, and the Pharisees, this desire to, to kill Jesus. And then, um, so verse 54 says that Jesus no longer moved about publicly among the Jews. Instead, he withdrew to a region near the desert to a village called Ephraim, and uh, where he stayed with his disciples. So, and then I wanted to go back to 57. This is, this is just um, the, the Pharisees getting angry. The, but the chief priests and Pharisees gave orders to anyone who found out where Jesus was that he should report it uh, so that they might arrest him. So Jesus became, in essence, the most uh, of the, the Jewish people's most wanted. He, he made their most wanted list. And so uh, Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead. The crowds go crazy. The Pharisees get jealous, and the Pharisees determine from that time on, we're, we're going we're gonna to kill him. And so Jesus does what everybody would do if they hear about this, you know, that somebody's after him. He withdraws. He goes into to, to this, this thing with his disciples. And then, then he does something uh, that just shocks us, uh, that, that nobody does in this situation. He's, he's wanted. He's going to be put to death if people catch him. And then in chapter 12, uh, verse, uh, verse 12, we start uh, to see how he enters into Jerusalem with what is, what is called the triumphal entry. And it says in chapter 12, verse 12, the next day, uh, the great crowd that had come for the feast heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They went out and took palm branches and went to meet him shouting, Hosanna, which means the word Hosanna, means uh, save us or save. Um, so the shouting, save, Jesus, save, you know. Jesus has become the savior of the Jewish people. Uh, that really just gets behind the, the Pharisees. And so it says, they go on and say, shout, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the king of Israel. Boy, that really just gets in, uh, in their craw. Uh, Jesus found a donkey, it says, and sat upon it as it is written, do not be afraid. O daughter of Zion, your king is coming seated on a donkey's colt. And then dropping down to verse 19, the Pharisees say to each other, See, this is getting us nowhere. Look how the whole world has gone after him. And so here's what I wanted to highlight about this, this triumphal entry and something that people really kind of don't catch. Um, the fact that when Jesus did this, it was the worst possible time to get loud. And Jesus came into Jerusalem loud. He didn't quiet the crowd. The Pharisees told him to. He said, no, if I quiet these people, the rocks are going to shout out. I'm not going to quiet them down. He came into Jerusalem loud. He's a wanted man. He, want, he needs to be in seclusion. He needs to be hidden and in secret. And he comes into Jerusalem loud. Um, Emma, my daughter, Emma and I, uh, obviously we've all got more time at the house uh, than we've had in past months and years. Um, so Emma and I, one of the things we, we've done we, a couple of nights, we, we get these movies, you know, okay? And so I'm watching this horror movie uh, with Emma. And I know, yeah, pastors are not supposed to let their daughters or they themselves watch horror movies. So, yeah, that's, just don't tell anybody. I'm sure this is not going to be told to anybody. So, but I'm watching this horror movie with Emma. It's called A Quiet Place, and I can't recommend it. Um, I thought it was good, but I can't recommend it because it is a horror movie, and I can't recommend that to people who are Christians. So anyway, um, so we're watching this. It's called A Quiet Place, and it's about a dad and a mom and their uh, three children, and um, they're doing all this stuff, and they're, they're running away from monsters and everything. And one of the things is the monsters um, can only, they can't see, they can only hear, and so they're going to come out. If you make any noise, they come after you, that kind of thing. And so there's two of his children are in this truck and the monster's kind of hitting the truck and just kind of pulverizing this truck. He wants to get to these, his, his, his dad's two uh, children. And the dad's standing afar, you know, far off and he sees that his children are in danger. And um, he stands up 
and in slow motion, um, great scene. You can you, you can Google the scene. Um, stands up and and, and um, he he looks at his daughter straight in the eye, and his daughter um, it doesn't ha has no sense of hearing. She's lost her sense of hearing, so he sign languages to her, and he sign language is very slow. He says, "I love you," and then he says, "I have always loved you." And then he screams. And because he screams, the monster that's attacking the children hears the scream of the dad. And obviously he goes and attacks the dad and the children uh, escape. And I, I see in that, that clip, I'm seeing what Jesus does on Palm Sunday. Is that he comes to Jerusalem loud. And as he comes to Jerusalem loud, he calls death toward himself. He calls, he's basically saying, he's basically screaming like the Father. He's calling death away from us because we, des we deserve the death. This, we de deserve the death on the cross. But he called it to himself. He screams. And as he screams, he says, I love you. I have always loved you. That's by our today. Father, thank you for your love for us, and um, thank you for this great love that we sense in this story of Palm Sunday. And we get all caught up with the crowd. We get all excited about the party, and we forget the subtext. We forget the underlying story that Jesus was starting this party up to call death to himself, to get attention and draw the attention on himself so that he would be the one that felt the full brunt of death. This great love that you have had for us, we are excited for, we praise you for, we give you all the glory for it, and we just have no words to thank you enough for your great love for us. Bless us, bless this day, keep us safe in your love, and keep us aware that you have always loved us. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, God bless you, Chapel Hill. Have a great day today.